and welcome back to another guide for Battletech. My name is Saiken and today we're going to explore the burning question of can we make the most useless mechs in Battletech somewhat usable? So I went out into the depth of the interweb and asked what the worst potential mechs are. Respectively, I read a couple of threads where that question has been discussed and Although the opinions were quite uh, varying, uh, shall I say, there were a few mechs that were regularly, quite regularly coming up on the very bottom end. And those mechs are here that the mechs that are typically on the lower end of the spectrum in each weight class will come up as the worst mechs. So this is a list of all of the mechs that are available in Battletech in its standard um, setup plus all of the DLCs and the way that I've determined like what is commonly referred to as the worst mech is I went through about a dozen of threads, looked at all of uh, the mechs that have been perceived as suboptimal and I essentially looked at the highest uh, denominator of those mechs so the most frequently quoted mechs that are bad. I then went into this list and double checked just if I can objectively understand why they are bad. And let's take a look at each of the categories and then we're going through the lands and see if we can make it work. For the light mechs, the by far worst mech with the most votes had been the Locust. The Locust is surprisingly low on all of uh, the measures that you can see. It's a light mech with the lowest tonnage in the game. It has the lowest free tonnage in the game. It has the lowest armor in the game. And it also doesn't carry a lot of weapons. Matter of fact, for light mechs in particular, you want to have a high number of energy hard points and a high number of support hard points because that's usually what determines the quality of your mech. Sometimes missile hard points can work. So either the Locus 1S or 1M could be perceived as the worst mech. I've selected the Locus 1M. It will not make a lot of difference from, uh, from the building perspective. Moving on to the medium mech. In the medium mech category, it was quite clear that the Cicida will take the cake for the worst mech and more specifically the Cicida 2A. It has been by far potentially the number one mech uh, that has been mentioned as the worst mech in the entire game. Problem here is again a one-to-one -one replica of the board game without giving the optionality. The Cicida was meant to be a really fast recon mech in the medium category. It has a high engine and the problem with that is in Mech Warrior you cannot change that engine for anything but the engine. So the mech ends up with 6.5 tons of open space, which literally is as little as the Locust. And that is embarrassing for a medium mech. Compare it to a similar weighted uh, mech uh, with the Vulcan, for instance, that has almost 20 tons of free space. I'm not going to uh, smack talk too much on the Cicida. The idea behind it is good. The execution rather lackluster but maybe we can make it work for us, which then nicely brings us to the heavy mechs. So for the heavy mechs, we did have two contenders for the worst potential mech, the Dragon and the Quick Draw. Both of them were frequently named as the worst mech that exists in the heavy tier, yet it was a bit indecisive and potentially because both of them struggle from exactly the same issue, is the Cicida. They have heavy engines, not a lot of uh, space to work with. You can see that some of the medium mechs have just as much tonnage as they do have available and they on top of it do not have that much more armor but yet lose minus one initiative which is quite a big deal. Anyways I was looking at both of those mechs and was trying to figure out which of them objectively is the worst mech and figured out that the Dragoon uh, or the Dragon continuously excels in most of the values. It has a higher melee damage value. It does have a decent energy missile and support hard point. So that is six uh, usable hard points as opposed to some of uh, the 4G versions here, uh, six hard points that do not have support hard points. So 
All things considered, it's a close call, but I ended up saying, you know what, we're going to take the quick draw because it has lower melee damage, so I can't really use a melee build here. And it also doesn't have support hard points, which could act as free damage or knife free, free damage because these are highly efficient weapons. Quick draw 4G is going to be the worst heavy mech in the game and the worst assault mech in the game by far. I mean, that was not even... Um, and question is the Banshee. The Banshee was perceived to be the worst mech because yet again, it has a massive engine. As a consequence of that, you can see it has an underproportional low weight available. Matter of fact, it has so little weight available that with the exception of the quick draw and the dra uh, dragon and maybe the rifleman, every other medium mech has more weight to work with compared to the Banshee. Banshee makes up for some of that with more armor, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it is slower, uh, both physically slower and also slower in the initiative. I think that that is an understandable judgment, although... Specifically with the Benchy, I think people have not really looked well enough into that mech. What do I mean with it? At least the BCM 3M variant has 14 hard points and with enough uh, support hard points, six of them in this case, you can definitely make a competitive mech. I'll of course use the worst uh, version in that case, the 3E with only four hard points uh, on support and one basically ballistic hard point which is completely wasted due to the low amount of storage available so we're working with six hard points problem that the benchy often runs into is that it will not have enough firepower good so those are the basics i hope that everybody still is awake because now we're going to take a look at the actual builds that i came up with all right back in action and i am by no means claiming that these builds are optimal i gave myself a couple of limitations number one i want to use uh, normal gear no mods whatsoever number two i will not use quote unquote the absolute strongest gear so there is no ecm i will do a bit of a different play style this time so the the ecm was off the limits everything else is more or less a, a go-to Let's start with the low mech. I have used the Locust, put in a nice comm system to make sure that we can continue with targeted shots. And in order to deal with the seven tons, number one, I've completely upgraded its durability. You can see it is packing 360 armor on 160 structure points. So that is a lot twice as much as armor compared to the structure. I used machine guns plus plus that come in for zero tonnage and use that to my advantage so that we can have a few shots here and then ERM lasers plus plus so that the idea is that this bad boy will be really scooping around. I will put a sensor locking pilot into this one here and make sure that we will essentially use both of the ERM lasers whenever uh, possible to kind of fire support a little bit. The firepower with 150 is nothing to scoff at. It's actually quite decent. And I think that uh, this may could flank around the back and yeah, maybe support kill and elsewise just mark the enemy. Moving on to the Seceda, I went for a different build and made its greatest liability into an asset. So comm system, gyro, pretty much a standard also filled in the entire arm slot with a bit of extra melee damage. So the Cicida here is packing at least 65 melee damage, which is not too bad and has quite a bit of structural damage. So could work as an addition to that. We were putting a um, couple of MGs plus plus in here. So we have four of these bad boys, just making it at least so that this guy comes to almost 200 firepower. But the core of uh, this whole build is a Coil M, a weapon that you haven't seen that often. Damage comes from number of evasion blips multiplied by the standard damage. This bad boy with the right movement and the right pilot could build up to seven blips of evasion. So we're looking at around 175 damage. If I can move correctly so much so, that the MGs can also fire. We're no longer at 150, but north of 300 points of damage, which is quite nice for a Cicida. 
How well that will end up in the heat um, efficiency department remains to be seen. I will be honest, potentially we'll need to take a couple of breaks. Good point here is machine guns are not taking up any heat, so that's to our advantage. Moving on to the quick draw. The quick draw was a mixed bag and I ended up deciding to go for a brawler build. It is a really interesting uh, mech in itself and I really fully armored it up to the maximum. We're looking at 1200 armor. So that is nigh comparable with a lower armored assault mech nigh comparable so we have it fully armored on all of the slots and the way that i wanted to deal with this mech is still find kind of a highly heat efficient version of uh, the mech we're running minus 50 on the heat which is not great but considering the limited space i needed to make some conf uh, confessions we're having erm lasers plus plus so we could work on pretty moderate to almost long distance with the four ERM++ lasers. And with an overall firepower of straight up 300, we can see that this mech is really packing a punch. I have an SRM4++ as well as an SRM6++, both with additional four damage and stability damage in there and one slot of armor, so one tonnage of armor, of ammo, not armor. And that essentially ends up to more or less 12 iterations of shots that we can take. There will be pauses that we will potentially need to take in between, but I decided to put a heat efficient Mac Warrior on this one here. And finally, we come up to the Benchy, which will be the crown jewel of uh, this setup. And you can already see, oh my gosh, Saiken, why are we only having 180 firepower? Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, my friends. So the Benchy itself is surprisingly fast for a heavy mech. I even put in, or an assault mech rather, I even put in a jump jet as you can see so that we can traverse small distances and are not kind of blocked. However, I couldn't put four jump jets in because that would have required me to make too many concessions. What I did instead is I invested uh, all of the slots that we had available, keep in mind one of the slots of uh, the uh, support hardpoints and energy hardpoints is in the head of the Benchy, which makes it actually even worse. So that one was still with the communication system, but all of the other slots, three support, one laser slot has been completely invested in maximum damage. We've used pulses, in this case, pulse plus plus with plus 10 damage for essentially six shots of small lasers plus plus because the pulse is double, uh, double shots. And then we had one longer ranged weapon just to be able to remove uh, the evasion blips. The core of uh, this mech, however, is a complete melee madness disaster. This mech, mech here is running into melee and will dish out damage for 270 with a massive stability damage on top of it. Mind you, that will go into a single area, so a leg can completely be smashed, maybe even a side torso or whatnot. On top of that, afterwards the pulses will be fired, so 270 and then around 140, 150 points of damage with the small pulses. I am expecting that we're going to smash enemies to the ground and then continue to fire on top of them this mech here will be quite strong however i recognize that its ranged engagement potential is a little bit low and therefore i put a snarky little mortar in here costs a lot of tonnage and i potentially could have had more jump jets and so on but i felt that that was boring to just have kind of a jump jetting benji that is running up to the enemy Instead, I felt that one mortar shot where the Benchy is essentially just, yeah, softening up the enemy with a well-placed mortar shot, maybe two or three enemies at once, and then charges in to completely wreak havoc and uh, get the enemies down, essentially followed up by a lot of the shots from uh, the others. Then that is the plan. So the Benchy will potentially take a lot of heat. It has all of the arm modifications, 
as well as a modification as a gyro in this case not the stability gyro but plus melee hit so it is outfitted as to completely tank for the beginning 1800 armor th uh, certainly helps and just goes completely ballistic problem here is both of the arms carry essentially the majority of the damage so if we're losing any of the torsos or the arms the build itself will become worse but look it's a benchy i haven't mentioned that this here is the best build ever i'm trying to work with whatever has been given to us so this is going to be our build we're going to go into a five star mission and i want to see how well this team of perceived trash mechs can actually work against a five star mission good here we go five star or five school mission in the desert biome destroy a base and we're going in with the locust cc that a quick draw and banshee i've selected a pilot that can use coolant vent in order to cool down the quick draw we got two ace pilots for both the benchy and the Cecida, and the locust will run with the sensor locking build and a master technician just getting it up to initiative number five so that we have maximum flexibility let's go and see how well we're doing all right we have landed on the planet let's see how well those mechs are doing in an actual engagement i'll fast forward the non-interesting parts and just show you the engagements good we have officially engaged the enemy so after going through this corridor there are a couple of 70 100 ton mechs and of course the base our big advantage with this max is the absolute speed that we bring to the table. Look at this, two, four, six, seven, five, and five evasion blips. So if we're playing our cards right, we can get in there and hopefully out of there faster than they will know what happened to them. Power line here is go. going to start I'll the process going. by hopefully spotting out what the enemy is going to do. Out. Again, using those 40% cover and as much as we can in our advantage. We're sensor locking the first enemy. Got a cataphract there. We're being sensor locked in return. And now it's time to start using our coil. As you can see, we've moved for five. And that means we're better using vigilance here because there's still a tower that is coming up. That means we would shoot for 125 points of damage. Start with the tower. That's an easy kill. We we'll move the others forward. Our big advantage is that we can use the quick draw. Affirmative. And I mentioned that this is going to be sort of our brawler. You can already see a bit more than 100 hit points left over. We would deal just enough with three shots. On it. Of course, providing that all three of them hit. And that is one less sniper tower to go. One left. Fantastic. So round number two starts. Cicida took a couple of hits, but nothing like completely severe question is do we want to fight against all of the towers and the enemies at the same time there's really not that much uh, room for maneuvering we could get up here and fight them on this high ground which is potentially what i'm going for so let me reposition okay after a bit back and forth we essentially moved everybody over here and now are in an interesting Commander. position so let's first of all see if the mortar would do us any good Potentially the answer is no, uh, which then begs the question, what else is the Banshee going to do? Vigilance, because I have the grand feeling that the Banshee will be able to tank most of these guys. Next round, this nice little huddle here Standing by. could already be punished by us for this round. I would use the advantage of the better initiative. So that here could be a thing. Using the Cecida, Move into position. mind you, the one that deals no damage. 
and we are trying to hit right into the shoulder of this grasshopper. Copy that. Nice that it hit. So that was 120. So that was 125 from the machine guns plus 125, so 250, almost 300 with the Cicida. That was not too bad. Starting point. Enemy Benshi moves up, that's fine. Enemy still has a couple of. A couple more on my way. Max to go. Going to continue Firing with that side. Grasshopper took some severe damage. Two wounds on the pilot now. And luckily all of our evasion keeps us well alive. Turrets are a bit of a problem. Locus moves over. Firing all weapons. And we're down to 10 hit points on that grasshopper. Interesting. Good. Ace pilot works fantastic with the coils, but it really doesn't. So the way that uh, the coils work is they only use the movement from last round and uh, that essentially doesn't carry over. So it would be nice if you could simply use the coil technology again. That's unfortunately not how it works. What works though is you'd be able to still shoot and then move afterwards since we only have 10 hit points here. I'm totally fine not using much more than that. Cicida gets the kill. And then afterwards... Moves all the way up here. Good, next up. It's a good time to use uh, the Locus to our advantage. It now has lost quite a bit of its defense. Therefore, we're moving back, getting those... Four evasion blips up, and the cataphract can be our next main target. So we're just sensor locking. That also gives us some more heat management. And that nicely brings us Good to, to a potential mortar. That's two hits. That's two hits. Can we get everybody in? Unfortunately not. Well, sometimes you gotta take what you can get. In this case, the Banshee moves up. Got an enemy Banshee. Two enemy Banshees, actually. And I would like to let it explode here. That means the entire back of that Banshee is affected and the Cataphract is affected as well. Okay, not bad. Damage is actually not bad. The enemy Banshee moves in, and takes a couple of uh, hits on us. That was to be expected. I mentioned that they are formidable opponents in melee damage. But if you take a look at it, it lost quite a bit of hit points. So did the Cataphract. The Quick Draw, on the other hand, still remains stable. So, what we want to do with the Quick Draw, of course, is. Move it a bit out of the danger zone here. And we could do it by essentially moving it back here, couldn't we? Yes, we could. None of these would uh, suffice, so yeah, we gotta take this one here. Location confirmed. Suboptimal. I'm going to use coolant vent and we're using another precision strike firing all weapons fantastic cataphract is primed okay it's our turn again this time i would like to start with the cedar 
And of course the cataphrag here would make the most sense, so I guess the ne next logical question is how can we actually move up without being in melee? That here would that here would be not too bad. That wouldn't be bad either, and but would potentially be in melee with the other Banshee. I'm a bit concerned about the Banshee's ability to dish out damage. We could go all the way to here. Or take the back of this banshee, which I think might not be the worst idea. Let's try that. Location confirmed. The cedar moves up. And the back is already highly damaged because of our previous mortar engagement. So how about we're just precision striking? Let's try the center torso. Here it comes. Oh, we were running out of ammunition. Little optimization is needed with the build. Locus moves up. Same deal. Targeting for an alpha strike. And the original mortar plus both of the attacks Commander. essentially sealed the deal. Moving up into 40% cover. And we gotta be careful not to overheat. Cataphrag, however, is gone. So far, the team is showing quite a bit of promise. The one mech that isn't performing as well as I would so far is the Banshee, but that's also me not putting it really up uh, in front onto the enemy. That'll happen very soon. Don't have the ability to move much closer. I'll get as close as possible. Unfortunately, can't fully hit the enemies. The mortar was fantastic. That was a great start for the Mac. The rest was mediocre. Okay, Cecida continues its reign of terror over here by essentially using the coil weapon. However, the heat almost got the better of it, so Cedar needs to be careful. Locus on the other side should be fine. And this here is... I'm just trying to be far enough away so that the Benshi cannot retaliate. So far we're doing absolutely fine. Benshi takes a bit of damage. Receiving you. Quick draw moves back, and again, we gotta be careful. You can already see we're overheating, so. Using a bit of a precision shot. Maybe onto the leg. Enemy took some shots, and now it is our turn. So, finally, for once, we're moving up, and. I would love to see how this is going. Left leg immediately destroyed, not even a challenge. Then a couple of follow-up shots. And this guy is going down. That is pretty much what I was expecting. Potentially should have vigilanteed uh, the Banshee here so that this damage would be less significant but yeah the banshee is doing well once it is in melee all right moving up with the locust vigilance just in case and 
we obviously can't hit. Okay, that was a uh, that was a bummer. Confirm. Enemy structure damage, Commander. Poor positioning. All right. So same deal as beforehand. We are having issues finding the right uh, spot. Yeah, and we can't cut a brace and save some energy. Beamoth, on the other hand, could move up. We'll do so. And let's see, maybe this is going to deal enough damage to the pilot. Another explosion, pilot continues being injured. And we just received a nice little hit here on the Locust. Immediately blew off our right torso. That's the problem. Even with one leg, the guy was still capable of attacking us. We're standing in vigilance. Now it's really an open fist fight almost. We need to turn around to hit this guy. Kill confirmed, Commander. Immediate kill on the central torso, thanks to the 270 points of damage. So the Benchy is doing its job. Unfortunately, I failed putting the smaller mix out of out of danger, so that was a mistake of me not calculating that the Benchy will still be able to reach us. Other than that, we did well. I'm getting blown apart out there. No, and now it's just free. a clean up. Let me finish that real quick. A quick change of events. So I'm almost done with cleaning the bases. Reinforcements just arrived. And boy, boy, we are up for a fight. Finally. Some fierce competition. The Locust here is already quite damaged from... All of the events uh, that were unfolding. But we can still use it. What do you need? Cecida potentially needs some break. Way. And we maybe as a group just need to retreat a tiny bit. Don't want to overheat here. Yes, Commander. Good. Instead, we're running up, moving away from the other mechs. Good. We still got that heavy tower here. I really don't don't like it. Heavy LRM tower. Moving up, and this should be a kill. Fantastic. Good. Tower gone. Bases without defense can always destroy the remaining buildings here. And now it's a bit of a question how well can we deal with all of these heavy mechs. Of them, matter of fact, assault mechs. So we have nicely moved in. Let them come. And potentially, potentially speaking, we would want to engage them here in the woods. So let them come a little bit closer down here and then engage them. That way we would have the advantage of all of the cover and they would be still in the open. Plus we need one or two more rounds of cooling down. I'll do that and once we're repositioned I'll continue. Okay, hey, so we have moved back. We're almost out of range, so much so that we gotta be careful not to move too close. How about we're moving right over here? Confirmed. There we go. And we are just 
wait a second we could also your laser yeah i think that that would all right i should have your lasered anyways doesn't matter so now waiting for orders seceder still doing well but we'll have heat problems because the coil gets quite hot If we could hit the head, the 100 hit points would actually be an insta-kill. Let's try that. Okay, didn't work out. Was still worth a try. Moving over with... How can... Could we maybe position ourselves here, but still... It's still in range, so this here could be a good spot. We know with a quick draw, we're taking vigilance for 60% damage reduction and precision strike. Gotta do the kills fast. Targeting for Fantastic. Reporting critical hit. Waiting for orders. All right, we're moving up. Move order received. Forty percent damage reduction, and there is a chance that we hit the torso. Yep, down to one Let's HP. Go. Fantastic. Go. Standing by. Good. We have the upper hand Serving when it comes to the turns. Receiving you. Might as well use it to our advantage. Precision shot. I think the coil laser. Could finish off the victor, if I'm not mistaken. Just needs to hit it, and Ace Pilot will allow us to move back. Okay, perfect. So, victor is gone. Also, highly heat efficient, because we actually gained, net gained some heat out of it. Locust. That's a tough one. Yeah, really, we don't want to go too close. I just want to sensor lock. And stay out of range. For now, we're going to leave it where it is. The quick draw, on the other hand, could go all the way up to here. Could even try to hit this guy. But that's a minus 40% damage reduction. So all of them are braced. I'll let them act first. And she takes a couple of hits. Unfortunately, a head hit amongst it. But that victor here is quite open. And can now be abused. Doesn't even have any form of protection. That could be a full hit. And since the chances are so good... Let's move up, Vigilance, and we're just going to fully unload. Coolant to give us that extra turn that we need. Taking the shot. Okay, good hit. Target. Okay, we took two extra shots. One of them a breaching shot. So this guy, yes, breaching shot the victor. We got a focus yes, on Commander. him first if we're now moving up it's still going to allow us to take a couple of shots not perfect by any stretch of the imagination but still okay you can see it took some damage Commander. we're not meant to be a ranged fighting entity. Good, but since all of them have already moved, it's easy for us to retaliate on them. Confirmed. Okay, we got the turns 
in the advantage there. Orders. How could we get the guy up there? All right, that that's it. Moving out. Let's try to hit him. Perfect. Half of the wep weapons are immediately gone. I think we're. I'm here. I think we're down to just a couple of one more weapon, right? Yeah, an AC twenty, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, the medium lasers in the SRM are gone. Those AC twenties are a pain in the rear to deal with. However, their AC-20s have the disadvantage of not being close-range weapons, so might as well use that to our advantage by getting further away. Acknowledged. Quick draw moves up. Roger. And we're prepping this other victory here. Not I'm great. We're control. overheated with the quick draw. We're having problems with Order. the Seceda. So we've seen better times. Moving all the way back with the Locust here. Trying to prime this guy. Wow, head hit. hit. Luckily, we had the 40% damage reduction that has helped us. That was an AC 20 to the head. That's just absolutely poor RNG. There's not much you can do about it. We're also out of missiles now, so we're just running on these ER lasers. So I'll potentially try to move everybody back and we'll just take range shots. Now, in terms of dealing with this guy, I would like to stand over here. That way we can only be attacked from the front. And this is potentially going to at least knock him down. For physical attack. Not only that, wow, look at the power. We that was well, that was actually quite impressive so the banshee moved up we single handedly destroyed the entirety of uh, his right torso and then the pulses uh, shot all the way into the torso we're taking some damage though on the other hand we now lost the arm of the seceda that can happen specifically with the ac20s that we're fighting against and the idea now can only be to fight at maximum range. Good. We're going to, again, abuse our faster movement. Sisida moves all the way over here. Tons and tons and tons of evasion blips. Copy. Same for the Locust. Our Banshee is taking the brunt of uh, the damage. Gotta be careful here. Quick draw on the other hand needs to be also very careful. Absolute maximum distance for the Quick Draw. 40% damage reduction and two lasers. Two lasers do not warrant a precision strike. I much rather will go into vigilance because they will retaliate. And if we multi target, can't even hit the other one. Okay, so. We're just straight out 
trying to hit this guy here. Locking on target. Good. Luckily, our Banshee is quite sturdy. Commander. And it's time for Vigilance. Um, fully reach them, which is unfortunate. All right, moving up. I think we're continuing to pepper this guy here. Locking in all weapon systems. All right. So far, so good. Critical hit. Let's hit him hard. Standing by. I'll wait with almost everyone, to be honest, because realistically speaking, we have the much better position. Uh, we can let them act first. And then it's our turn. Receiving you. Banshee. Oh, he still moved back because he knew what is going to happen. He already knew what is going to happen. Okay, cool. Good. Vigilance. I can promise you guys next turn... The Banshee is going to go in. I am contemplating, by the way, my decision making of earlier. And potentially it would have been better to have more oh. jump jets. Good. Enemy can take a turn. All right. Internal structure damage. Orders. Good, let's see. This here will allow us to take shots. That is 125 points of damage. Firing on target. Nicely hit into the center torso. Continuing to pepper this guy. No retreat. Commander. Okay, so I think all things considered. Rather move over here yet again. And then sensor lock. Sensor lock does also jam its sensors, so it'll have a hard. They will have a harder time trying to hit us. So see that moves over. Not even sure if we can afford that shot. No, we would overheat. Bracing to save some heat. Some more damage. Big hit. Big hit. Starting with Vigilance. And how about we're just killing this guy? Mm. Holy shit, directly in the central torso. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Tango, down. The Banshee is just aggressively going in. With Vigilance together, it took quite a few hits, and yes, it has taken some damage, but boy oh boy, are we dealing some damage in return. I copy. Good. Are going to... Ah, we're not using Precision Shot. We need that next round. Because this guy here... 
does have master technician so even if we reduce the initiative to one it would automatically go back to two at the end of the round we already had that quite a few times instead we are using sensor lock to reduce his sensor capabilities he only has an ac20 left All right, there we go. Moving over. Coil straight to the core. <laughs> That's a kill. Cecida again strikes for 125 points of damage. And that brings us to the end of this mission. Was it successful? Yes. Could it, uh, could it have been a tiny bit better? Yes, potentially as well specifically the one positioning mistake but all things considered were the mechs really as bad as their reputation i'll let you con uh, consider it uh, by yourself maybe you want to leave your opinion in the comments down below a couple of highlights just uh, for your consideration i think the locust throughout the entirety of the map was able to keep up with the damage did not run out of uh, ammunition yes it lost its arm Fair enough, but it also killed two enemies um, just by itself. Then we had the Cecida. Did it have heating problems with all of the coils? Yes. Was it structurally not as uh, strong as other mechs? Absolutely, even with uh, six or seven evasion blips, there's always that occasional hit that will remove your arm. Did it, on the other hand, kill three enemies and continuously uh, dish out between 150 and 300 hit points yep maybe something to consider then the quick draw took a massive hit to the head uh, was definitely a brawler but could have taken an ac20 hit to the head and essentially was able to i think most consistently dish out uh, damage across uh, the team if i was to rebuild it over i would probably invest even more into heat sinks and maybe get rid of a few missiles in return make it last just a little bit longer overall though i think arguably a, a good mid-range to range build and then lastly the banshee the one that everybody made fun of could it be better without the mortar more jump jets and then just focus on its tasks yes you could uh, definitely think about it on the other hand the mortar itself dealt about 400 points of damage and offered two kills right afterwards so it's a fantastic item to just yeah open up a pack was the banshee an absolute beast once it was in melee yes it was absolutely fantastic uh, it uh, killed three mechs in a row two of them immediately one-shotted it and on top of it the structure so yeah th those were the highlights and I've, of course uh, tried to kind of make a point for the mechs from a positive standpoint let me know what you think are those trash mechs are they not playable at all or was there a bit of an overstatement are these mechs actually a bit better than their reputation counts for let me know in the comments down below and see you in the next episode of battletech bye bye guys